Hey guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluto, Paul Pluto channel. Today I'm doing some paid reviews. Don't forget guys, like, subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel. Tell your fuckhead friends about your my channel. Okay guys, let's jump straight in. I'm doing a paid review. Remember, like, subscribe, tell your fuckhead friends, and don't forget men cannot live on Google Ads alone. I depend very heavily on paid reviews to keep me full-time on YouTube. Don't forget, too, you could also sponsor me on Patreon. That's right, Patreon. You send a small amount each month, and I give you a look at secret videos. Very secret videos indeed. Okay, guys, let's have a look here. Paid reviews. Hi, Arch. My name is Chris, and I live in Philadelphia. I've been watching your show for a year. I got into luxury watches two years ago, and I currently have three watches. My first piece is a Breitling Navitimer Heritage, which I bought for $3,000 about two years ago. My second piece is a Rolex Datejust 116233, two-tone Datejust, that's the modern one which I bought nine months ago for 5800 And my last piece is an Amiga Speedmaster Professional, which I bought three months ago for 3350 As it stands, the watch that I wear to work is my Omega Speedmaster Professional uh, Man on the Moon. If I want to go out for fun, I prefer to wear my Breitling Navitimer Heritage because the dial is so beautiful. If I want to go to conservative events like a wedding and the rest, I wear my Rolex Datejust because I consider it as a dress watch. So far, I'm happy with my free wa three watches and do not want too much. In the future, I might consider a diver. So what dive watch do you think would complement my collection? IWC Panerai or Rolex? I love variety and I'm not really into getting the same brand that I already have in the collection. See the pics of my collection and tell me what you think. I will. Uh, he says, I've also included $25 for your fee. Regards. And this is from Chris in Philadelphia. Well done, Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much for getting the pontiff to put the seal on this here. And uh, i got to tell you, very interesting collection there. You've got the... Breitling Navitimer Heritage. Yes, yes, I must say, I I quite like the Navitimer myself. I've always loved the Navitimer. I think they are a, I think they're a great watch. Really cool watch indeed. Um, it's it's a good watch. Navitimer is a great chronograph. You've got a Datejust. And you got the newer versions, a two-tone with the revised, this is a 36 mil revised clasp, which is, I, I think it's a big improvement over the rattlesnake type of clasp. So, um, that's, that's a good, that's a good watch to have. You paid high, 5'8", ooh, that's strong, but I suppose... Uh, and then you got the, the, uh, the, the Amiga Speedmaster 3.3, that sounds like you got it from Joma Sharp. Um, yeah, so, uh, what do I think? Well, I, I think that's the start of a fantastic collection there. And, um, it's really interesting because I find it myself, when you have too many watches, I, I don't know if you get more enjoyment out of it. Uh, I gotta say, you know, I, I think three or four watches is a great size collection to have there. I've, I've, um... I'm a believer in you've got to love all your watches and wear all of them. You don't just wear one or two of them. Otherwise, what's the point in having these bloody things? Um, i got to say, I think that's a nice... They're very, very iconic. <clears throat> Navi Timer, iconic. Datejust, iconic. And the, the Man on the Moon. Uh, now, you, you're asking about a, a diver. That's a very, very... Very, very good question. What would I recommend as a diver? Look, I hope you're buying on the pre-owned market because uh, if you're buying new, there's only one choice in divers. That's the Rolex Sub Submariner. That's the only brand that only brand that holds its value. Um, I I would say 
in your collection there, I would really like to add. I reckon the best the best piece to add there. Now I find this interesting. You know, I tell you the truth. I used to buy more than I'd have a couple of Rolexes, might have two Amigas. But when I actually said one brand, one watch per brand, I found it gave me a lot more. I had to think about what I chose. So I, I quite enjoy that. I've got six watches. Everyone knows my, my six there the Paddock World Time, Jaeger La Cultura Reverso, the Amiga Speedmaster, Men on the Moon, Polar, Polar Explorer 2. IWC Ingenua and the Breguet Type 20. Everyone knows those. Uh, I, I would say, you know, you've given us some choices there. <clears throat> if you're buying used, I would really say, now you've already said you can't, you don't want to have the same brand there again, which I quite respect. I must admit, I, I do respect. I, I would say Panerai, wouldn't you? You'd have to add a Pan, wouldn't you? Uh, IWC does have a great dive watch, which is very soft. It's very soft on the used market, the IWC Aquatimer. Aquatimer's on the used market, pretty good bang per buck. So that, that could be something to consider. But I'd, I'd probably, you know, I think IWC is more famous for its pilot watches. Uh, than, well, the Aquatimer is, is a pretty famous model too. But I think Panerai would have to be the dive brand, isn't it? Panerai's always been... That's all it is, really. It is a dive watch. All it does is dive. Uh, so I, I, I think a Panerai, a Pam, maybe a Pam 111 or a 112, something like that would be just cool to add to the collection and uh, enjoy. Um, that That's probably where I'd be steering it, you know. I, I, I think I think um, if, if you were going to double up, you'd get a Rolex no-date sub, no question about that. That's an icon in itself. But if you don't want to have uh, more than... You don't want to have one brand, two examples of one brand, I, I reckon the, uh, the Pams, you'd have to go Panerai. Panerai? Um... That's, I th that's what I think you'd have to do. But if you were going to buy brand new, if you were buying new, the only brand you could get is Rolex. Rolex, indeed. Um, so, I, I think that's great. I think it's very interesting having one brand, one watch per brand. Because i I got to say, you know, I'd, I'd love to own... It, it's kind of... It makes you really think about it. And, uh, look... These rules, I, I kind of look at my collection and think, ah, just gives me, ah. It's nice collection, one brand per watch. I love looking at them. You think, ah, look at that, I got a Panerai. You know, you know, you, well, I don't have a Panerai, but I mean, you look at it and go, wow, you got a IWC, you got an Amiga, you got a Rolex, you got, you know, you, you sort of have your brands there. I mean, in your case, Panerai would be another brand, completely different style, different genre of watch. I think that's probably, a, I, I find that very helpful as a rule there. And I, I also find it interesting that you've got three, you're very happy with the three. I think keeping the collection smaller is really a good idea. It really is. I had a good friend of mine, he had a lot of watches, about 16 watches, and he's just starting to sell a few off, just for personal reasons. He's not really pushed for money, he's just... He's not wearing a lot of them, and and I, I think a more smaller collection is a more intimate collection. Um, so I I, I kind of think it makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> Less is more. Do we have to have more, more, more pieces? Endless quests for watches. I mean, I've got half a dozen, six. I would like to add a diver. I want to add a diver too, but I'm not rushing out to do it. I don't have to have a diver. I've kind of said to myself. I'll add one or two watches a year. I think that's the answer for happiness. I think if you add too many, it puts too much pressure on it. A problem comes up and you have to sell it. So, But if you, if you just slowly add one or two a year, 
I think that's a much better way to go. That's just my opinion. That's my opinion. I, I think that's the sensible sensible way to go. So um, very interesting collection. I think they all work. They work beautifully. You got a, the Breitling is a cool piece. The the, the date just and you've got the uh, Amiga. Really beautiful collection. Really nice. I can see different occasions. You can wear different pieces. Um, so I probably say if you're going to buy new have to be a rolex subby sub no date if you're going to add you're going to buy pre-owned get a pam get a pam pams are very soft on the market <clears throat> very soft hopefully you can argue you know you can the best advice if you're going to get a pam is make sure you must have box and papers if not original res sales receipt because there's so many super fake pams and stay away from the white dials. You want to get a black dial Pam. I don't know why this is the case. This is just this this is this is the rule. So I'd I'd probably go for a traditional like a Pam 111. That's what I'd personally manual wind. Just classic Pam. There we go, guys. I'm Paul Pluto. This is the Paul Pluto channel. Tell me what you guys tell me what you guys think of that. Remember, like, subscribe, and tell your friends about my channel. Yeah.